Good morning. Welcome to Kilachari Torah's daily review of Maimonides' uh, 613 mitzvahs, the Sefer HaMitzvot, for Friday, November 12th. Uh, we spoke uh, yesterday about uh, some of the uh, well-known uh, uh, prohibitions, uh, kosher prohibitions, things we're not allowed to eat. Uh, so here are perhaps two of the best known. Uh, prohibition number 186, uh, negative commandment number 186 in Maimonides' listing, we are forbidden to cook milk, uh, co- sorry, cook meat in milk. Lo tevashel gedi bachlev imo, do not cook a kid. Seethe a kid in its mother's milk, I think is how our old friend King James uh, translates it. Uh, so we're forbidden to cook uh, any meat in any uh, kind of milk. doesn't have to be uh, the particular milk of this mother and this uh, kid. Uh, that's a discussion in the Talmud in uh, Tractate Chulin. Uh, and uh, we want to emphasize here that we're talking specifically about cooking. So even if one doesn't eat, has no intention whatsoever to eat this, uh, even cooking for uh, non-Jewish uh, friends or colleagues, uh, there is a prohibition nonetheless for a Jew to cook meat and milk together. Prohibition number 187, the following one we're a little bit more familiar with perhaps, that's a prohibition to eat meat which was cooked in milk. So no cheeseburgers, no chicken parmesan, uh, anything of the like. Uh, the, uh, uh, when, when the Torah says, Lo uh, the Talmud has this conversation about, uh, does it mean any meat? Uh, what about chicken? We, uh, rabbinically, we include chicken in this prohibition. Uh, does it have to be the milk of the mother that uh, we're cooking in? No, it could be any milk uh, of any uh, animal. So, of course, uh, obviously, we're not talking about uh, all the, the uh, milks which are becoming popular today. Oy, uh, oy milk. Ha! Soy milk. Oat milk, that's a combination of uh, oat and soy, is oy milk. Soy milk and oat milk and almond milk and rice milk and all these other things. Uh, so the Torah does not prohibit those things. Uh, so uh, uh, they would be perhaps uh, uh, permis- permissible to be eaten. However, we do have a prohibition that we have to take into consideration called marit ayin, maris ayin. How do things appear to the eye? So, if uh, you're known to be a fine, upstanding member of the Jewish community and uh, someone not knowledgeable uh, about, uh, knowledgeable of your reputation, but not knowledgeable about your culinary practices, sees you eating, uh, let's say, a nice uh, juicy burger with some of that uh, plant-based cheese melted over top. You're munching away on a cheeseburger and say, oh, that's funny, I thought Jews weren't allowed to eat meat and milk together, and here's my good friend so-and-so, who I know is a religious Jew, ah, maybe uh, whatever it is. So we have to, uh, also uh, for Jews who might say, oh, uh, that person's uh, religious or observant or identifies strongly with the Jewish community, if they're eating a cheeseburger, I can eat a cheeseburger uh, too. So they go home and make a real one not an imitation one like uh, we may be eating. So you have to watch for that all the time. And the Shulchan Aruch actually explains that uh, once upon a time in Purim, uh, a very uh, popular dish was to eat something akin to chicken parmesan, uh, some kind of chicken with, uh, with, uh, with uh, almond milk uh, cheese uh, melted over it. So that was a popular thing. People used to pour them. You know, things are a little bit funny on Purim. Uh, so they used to, uh, when they would serve that dish, they would put a few almonds uh, on the plate to indicate to everyone, like, what are almonds doing on my plate? Oh, that must tell me that this is almond milk, almond cheese, uh, rather than actual real cheese. So it would uh, keep people uh, clear about uh, what was happening. So that uh, principle was brought forward to the days long ago, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago, when non-dairy creamer became popular. So uh, in the early going, uh, the, the uh, kosher agencies, the kosher agencies, uh, required them when, when non-dairy creamer was served, uh, you know, at the wedding reception, at the at the dinner, uh, after you had your uh, chicken or your uh, steak or whatever it was, and they brought around the coffee and the coffee creamer, they required it to be in the carton labeled as part of, so people wouldn't get confused and think by accident they brought the cream out. Nowadays, it's so common that we don't uh, require that anymore. But that's a little uh, note, a little fun historical note about the way things change. Uh, let's pause here and just remind ourselves that since uh, as of last Malte Shabbos, we have changed the clocks. If you haven't done that yet, high time to do so now. Uh, the uh, uh, Shabbat times have moved back considerably. Uh, candle lighting this afternoon is at 4.36. 4.36 p.m. is the time to light Shabbos candles. Min Chamayrev, uh, approximately 4.40. Uh, we are not gathering in Shul, unfortunately, this week. Hopefully, we will resume our uh, daily and Friday night services, and uh, we'll let you know when that happens. Uh, but if you'd like to dive in together with the Kehila, we'll all be at home, but about 4.40. Uh, Motzei Shabbos tomorrow evening is 5.40, 20 minutes to 6. Uh, a little bit uh, early, considerably earlier than last week. Uh, Zoom Havdalah, we will be taking a break just this week, and we will reconvene 
uh, on Zoom, please God, the following week. Have a wonderful Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, all the very best.